Welcome back to another episode of the HOT. Yes, I have been away for a couple of months and I am in a different place to record this video. And this one, I would like to talk about the Apple Vision Pro. Yes, and out of blue, as everyone already know, that Apple told us that the headset will be available to pre-order next week and then on the shelf by early February, February 2nd, I think. But that's in the United States only, as I am in New Zealand. I cannot just go get one, even I have $5,000 lying around. So no, I am not going to talk about how to pre-order or what to expect with this hardware. Instead, this video will specifically talk about the spatial video function that is related to the Vision Pro. I'll share some of my own research towards the spatial video and which is introduced by Apple with the headset plus some of my own thoughts and I will start from some existing video technologies that already offer a 3D look or say stereoscopic vision effects specifically I will be discussing the spatial video with 3D scanning as well as VR 180 videos but before directly jumping into some tech terms and discussion let me just give you some context here. So at first, at the WWDC 2023, Apple only showed the spatial video capabilities of the Vision Pro as a demo on the event. And as you can see, the demo here is very impressive. And we immediately extracted some details from the video out of, say, my professional instinct, if you can see that way. First, it is six stuff, six degree of freedom, and it's a movable mirroring angle, then some three-dimensional characters with depth information. And of course, most last of importantly, that it is with very high image details. These features are both exciting for me, as well as intriguing, because the spatial video has been potential to revolutionize the way we watch videos. It also offers a more immersive and realistic viewing experience than any traditional two-dimensional videos uh, as it can be used for a variety of applications if become reality such as virtual tourism, virtual storytelling, professional training, as well as education. So as a VR researcher myself, other than just the wow and excitement, I am also very curious about how their spatial video is implemented things it is less likely that Apple will go invent some completely new way to introduce this visual look only. I started from some off-shelf solutions. Currently, as I am aware of, that there are two main types of technology that can achieve the stereoscopic visual effects. So one type is VR180 video. On a VR180 camera, as you can see in the picture, two fisheye cameras simulate two human eyes that to capture the same scene from a super wide angle view of from 180 degrees to 100 degrees and after post-processing the video from the left and the right eye camera is both output to the viewers left and the right eyes respectively and the viewers brain will then just like we do in normal life take both visual inputs and combine them into a perception that with depth like how in real world we see everything and to perceive distance or locations. But one key characteristic of the VR180 video is that it's always a 3 dot experience. As you can see, that the viewers can look around by turning their head with their headset on, but they can only be in the position that where the camera was placed when shooting the video and that they cannot move around afterwards in the scene. So that's one side the VR180, and the, another one of the technology is 3D scanning. So this, we can say it's a kind of a stereoscopic video, allow me to temporarily recall so, but it's actually a scene recreated, a 3D scene with RGB information and depth information. This is actually a 6 stuff experience for VR or AR, rather than just passively watching a video from a screen. So, one thing is that it will require a specialized equipment such as depth camera, LiDAR, or TOF cameras to achieve the purpose. For example, there's an app called Wist that uses a LiDAR on the back of the iPhone to scan and capture depth information around the scene and also alongside with the main camera working at the same time that used to capture visible lights or call it RGB information. 
The system then combined both into a color scene with near to real spatial structure with depth information. And since its WWDC launch, speculation about the implementation of spatial video has been going on, going on. People are guessing at like how is a technical principle what do to achieve the purpose. It could either fall into one of the two I just said, maybe a VR 180 video, it turns out, or it's a 3D scanning. So from one hand, based on the six star features we saw in the launch event video, it showed a very obvious camera panning. You can obviously see that on the video here. So instead of uh, just the head rotation. So from that we say, okay, if it's a six star, then it should be the second type, which is uh, coming from a 3D scanning. But from the other hand, there are also some contracting voices. The main argument is that the image quality of the existing 3D point to cloud mesh conversion or reconstruction of the 3DC from scanning is relatively low. There were always a lot of noises or other things that make it very not like cinematic quality. But the video quality shown on the launch event demo is just basically too good. It's as if it's a full resolution phone video with no shaking, no distortion. Therefore, those people hold the verdict that Vision Pro's special video must be a VR 180, otherwise it can't be that perfect. But some people say, considering the exaggerated number of lenses or computing power that we gain from the information about the Vision Pro hardware, it is not impossible for Apple to find some way to capture 3D mesh and an RGB information in very high quality and then stitch it into maintaining the cinematic virtual quality uh, in the result as we see. So, but we don't know. With a lot of unknown like that, everyone just keep speculating and waiting to see how the final result turns out. However, not too long after that, just because um, we think that people have to wear a Vision Pro headset on their face in order to capture f uh, spatial video, it, although it looks very weird from my eye. But then on the September iPhone 15 event, Apple just unveiled that Everyone with an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max can actually capture spatial video, just play them back on the Vision Pro. So it turns out not only the headset, a phone can be a device to capture the video just like that. I must acknowledge that it is a, indeed a big advance forward compared to previously we must use extra spatial gear or hardware such as a 360 camera or a special VR 180 camera to capture those immersive content. By making spatial video capture available on a popular smartphone, uh, the producer or the Apple just lower the barrier to entry for content creators. It could be fostering a wider adoption of this innovative, not maybe or say not innovative, immersive format. The event did shed some light on the speculation. The iPhone 15 Pro series is definitely not a VR 180 camera, we all know that. And according to Apple's document, it uses the main and an ultra wide lenses from the back of the phone to capture the spatial video. And we know that unlike a VR 180 camera, which uses two fisheye ultra wide angle lenses and both sitting 67, meter, uh, 67 millimeters away, and the iPhone 15 Pro series have none of that. So it does not have the fisheye lenses, does not have two lenses sitting that wide. Therefore, I'm thinking. If the hardware shows that it cannot do VR 180, it means a spatial video is captured by iPhone using a 3D scanning and the reconstruction method, then combining the capture from the two lenses at the same time, also using the LiDAR on the back of the phone for depth information capture. And as you know, that my thought on this did not come out of nowhere. There are people doing that before. There's one app called Wist, as I mentioned previously. It's currently still in beta, but has been inviting people to test it around for quite a while. It used the method just like I said. It, it, it's using the cameras for color information, use the LiDAR to capture the depth information to enable a six stuff scene. But I've tried it. Its capture results are just quite unstable, as you can see from one of the results that I did. It comes a lot of occlusion, or noises, scanning, and resolution is all being limited by the hardware we're using, it's just far from perfect. However, the spatial video demo from the WWDC is just too beautiful in quality compared to what I get from the WIST, even if it is using the same method. So 
I don't think it's going to be uh, produced in a 3D scanning way, but maybe I have no idea in that. They, they achieved in some way that it's, it's a combining of a VR 180 or 3D scanning. I think I have to wait until I get the phone or get the Vision Pro or hands-on to figure it out. So I just think, okay, let's wait for when the hardware become available in everyone's hands. But turns out I didn't wait that long after all, because Apple dropped the iOS 17.2 software update, and people find out that if you are on the iPhone 15 Pro series phone, the spatial video capturing function has been activated in the phone. And sadly, I don't have the phone myself, but I managed to find some raw videos that were captured by someone having the iPhone 15 Pro phone, and the spatial video actually they captured with the phone, and they are nice enough to share the raw video file on the internet. So what I did when I get the video files is directly to put them uh, on the Mac and then hit play directly. So here's what I saw on the computer screen. Uh, it appeared as a super long stripe of two almost identical videos sitting together left and right. As you can see, I'm showing what I see back then. Uh, this is something that is not stranger to me as uh, I've done several VR 180 uh, video production before. It looks so similar to VR 180. And what's different is as for my eye, it is not a two square video that's sitting together. It's captured in the 16 by 9 ratio, it's which we see a lot in mobile phone videos. It's like two video streams stitching together. I also learned that, that uh, Apple Vision's uh, Apple Spatial Video uses a format they call a multi-view high efficiency video coding or MVHEVC for this spatial video thing. And the format actually stores a base 2D view uh, plus what is known as a delta instead of storing two videos together. So the sample video I got uh, from the internet actually has been converted to a more conventional side-by-side -side format. Therefore, we can directly play it with a supported uh, software or player like you see here. And then it can be viewed just like normal VR 180 videos using a headset or some uh, stereo glasses. And the one thing also it is quite obvious is that the content in the two video streams seems not too distorted because if it's from a fisheye lens video and the raw is very distorted so it means it's coming from a lens that is similar to a normal FOV of a mobile phone camera it's probably to think how many of degree of freedom that the viewer will have when watching those videos so in order to test it out I just load them into a Quest 2 and now because of VR Vision Pro not physically available yet. I can't get my hands onto that, so I have to test it with a different headset. And the final result is that it just shows up as almost the same size as a normal YouTube video will be in front of my eyes. And 16 by 9, if you have been using YouTube VR before in a headset, and you know how it looks like, like a screen just sitting a little bit far from me, the only difference is that it's in the 3D effects, such as the dog, is feel like moving towards the camera, towards the viewer. As also when the one picks up the mobile phone moving closer to the camera, it feels it's moving close to my eyes. But definitely the viewer won't be able to look around because there is nothing to look around. It's just everything is on the screen in front of the viewer. So, and of course in this screenshot here, you can't see any 3D effects because this video I'm capturing is just flat two dimensional. So you can't see the stereo effects. So now the answer of what is spatial video has been 100% reviewed and there's no more secret. I must first admit that I am quite disappointed. If that is what the final iteration of the Apple spatial video has been talking about all the time, it means that it's not a VR 180 and it's also far away from what a three dimensional scanning that I expected. It's even less interactive and then the capture is have a less field of view than a normal VR 180 even for the basic comparison it just using the parallax effect between the two lenses on the back of the phone plus maybe some post processing to turn them into two stream of videos for viewers left and the right eyes so in summary I can say other than adding some 3D depth effects it has nothing different from a normal conventional mobile phone video that you just hold your phone and to capture or the one I'm doing now. And it's definitely not that new. Remember there's a phone called HTC EVO 3D many, many years ago before, also saying it can capture 3D videos. So, but anyway, originally when the spatial video was introduced, 
uh, I would say its pipeline from capturing on the iPhone and people can directly view it in a headset is actually a big advantage and it will allow people to capture and view 3D content smoothly without having to deal with technical process such as exporting, stitching, conversion, etc. It also, at Centra, it also can say that it will uh, introduce more general public into producing, viewing, and sharing 3D content. And then when the, well, even that format is just as simple as a mobile phone video with stereo effects. However, I must also say if the implementation of the spatial video is just as simple as a left eye, right eye stereo 3D video, it will, I say, not open a new frontier to new storytelling format. Like what I see, it's just like not like 3D video, 3D 60 videos or VR 180 that has exploded. The language and the skill that were needed for this thing is almost likely within the matured filmmaking realm. And the people like me, immersive storytellers or VR researchers, is it's not like what we expected will be a tackle the point of view or the role of the viewer or something like a break out of the non-linear storytelling realm. It's it's not going to happen with this spatial video. But generally, I'm still glad that. Apple introduced something different from just a conventional photo or video to another mobile phone when others, many of them are just fighting over how many numbers of the lenses should be put on the phone back or a bigger sensor. At least Apple did something different than that. Maybe their emphasis at this moment is on removing the most obstacles in the workflow of capturing and viewing and sharing immersive content for the general public when using its advantage in this hardware ecosystem so people can integrate they capture such content into their daily routine. It's just on the phone now. And this type of immersive content, interaction, the methodology of production around it, or other new methods, maybe it's something for the next step. I don't know. It's something in the future. But whatever so, I'm also looking forward to the raise of awareness among people and their interest among the 3D content or say immersive content. So it'd be more uh, generic. The people were like me who are experts in immersive storytelling in the realm, then can jump in later and show general public what everyone can do and what can be explored. So after that, I will say, I will definitely try to see how people will use it and I definitely get, try to get my hands on onto the technology and hardware when they become available. So that's pretty much everything I know and I learned about the spatial video being introduced with Apple Vision Pro. And I think there'll be more that I'm looking forward to it and I will share it with you when I get to learn other things, when the hardware become available, when I try my hands on on the special video capture and sharing. But for now, that's all for today, I would say. Thank you very much for viewing this far and I will see you next time.